So I've been really lucky to receive a development board from Open Marine, which is called the MacArthur Hat. Now this project um, runs alongside their software, which is now at version three, and it brings together a number of interfaces that you might find on your boat to allow you to connect into those marine electronics quite easily. I think one of the challenges that a lot of people have had is that they have to make a lot of these electronics and now the software is getting more accessible and easier to install on devices. The aspect that they needed to turn their attention to next was the electronic side and that's what they're doing with this. So as I say, this is a development board and it's called a hat. Um, and what a hat is, is something that sits on top of a Raspberry Pi. So it uses the pins along the top of the Raspberry Pi here, and then it just literally pushes into those, and it gives you different interfaces um, so that you can connect into your marine electronics. So if we have a look at the back of the board here, you can see you've got an NMEA 2000, you've got an NMEA 0183, we've actually got two of those, and you've got a CTALK uh, interface. Now those three interfaces are what you'll find on most boats. Um, a lot of older boats would tend to have NMEA 0183 and possibly SeaTalk. SeaTalk was proprietary Raymarine. Um, and then as you start to upgrade, you start to move towards uh, NMEA 2000, which is the later standard. But by having these different interfaces on the board, it allows you to connect and also migrate from older electronics to new electronics. So you can use this piece of hardware to support that migration. It's also got um, an RJ45 connector on the end here, and that is used to connect to their AIS module that they've recently released, which is an AIS transponder. Um, and there's also at the back, um, there's a switch here that allows you to move that into silent mode so that you're not always transmitting your AIS information. It's also got popular interfaces that you tend to see on the Raspberry Pi, like one wire, so the small sensors, temperature, things like that. And on this side, it's got an I2C interface, which actually got two of those. This one at the bottom here allows you to connect things like um, pressure and humidity sensors. And the one that's on the board allows you to drop in a module similar to this one that would support things like autopilot. So there's a module that they tend to use, which brings in pitch information from the boat. Um, and they use that as part of their autopilot software. This module that you can see here, this is a power module and this is optional. You don't have to run with that. So you can power it from the Pi into this board or what you can do is you can buy the module here and stack that or connect that into it here, such as that. And that will then um, transfer power from this board into the Raspberry Pi. On the back, here are the power connectors. So you can connect this straight to 12 volts. So this could be connected to your existing navigational instrument switch. Um, and what it will do is when you when it switches itself on, it will then power up the Pi. But what's even nicer is when you switch it off, it'll power down the Pi correctly and mean that it doesn't just cut the power. So it'll initiate a power down sequence. And when the Pi has turned off, this then drops the power. So that's really quite nice. And then it'll get, avoid having problems with things like SD cards getting corrupted, things like that. So again, it's making the, the whole thing a bit more production, really, a bit more like a, a bought product, which I think is really, really good. It's really well designed. It's, it's a really nice um, bit of kit. Um, and you can see here on the end, there's different lights here telling you whether you would be receiving or transmitting uh, data across the various uh, interfaces and also on the you can see a, an LED against the 5 and the 12 volts. So as I say, um, it's in development. It's been called MacArthur after Dame Ella MacArthur, uh, which I think is also quite a nice touch. And um, I think what it's going to do is it's going to mean that a lot more people can actually get on board with this because the software and the documentation is coming along really, really well. Um, and I think particularly with version 3, attaching this board to it actually makes it a bit more like a bought product. Um, and I think, as I say, that there's there's various options with the different interfaces that you've got here, a way of connecting into old and new equipment, um, which I think, again, is really, really nice. Another couple of things that they've um, put on is there's a couple of jumpers, so these little pins here that you can take off and connect in. Um, and what they do is they allow you to turn things on and off on the board. So down here, we've got um, on the enemy 2000 network we've got a terminator so if this was connected in the middle of that network 
and I'll show a bit of a diagram to try and explain this a bit better, you wouldn't terminate that. But on a on the two ends of a NMEA 2000 network, you need terminators so that it, this, this essentially the network knows that that is the end and there's nothing beyond it. So if this is connected at the end, instead of you then having to come out and then buy a terminator, you literally just switch that um, jumper here to terminated and this is then the end of the network. So there's loads of little touches. The other one here on the CTORC, so if you don't want to use the CTORC interface and you want to use it for something else, there's a great guide in the documentation and you can switch that again from non-CTORC to um, using the interface for, for other functions, which again is a really nice touch. So I think with this board, what's really nice is I can see this board being on the boat for quite a long time because not only can you use it to support maybe a migration from, from one network to another, um, but it's got all the interfaces. So for me, I haven't got NMEA 2000 yet, but by just putting this board, I've got an NMEA 2000 output. Um, so I can see it actually being on the boat for, for quite a good period of time, which again is a, a really nice idea. And the fact that that linked up with the software that's been constantly developed, you know, it, it's a package that you're going to have for quite a long time. Um, so yeah, really good. I'm really happy to be part of the trial. I'm going to obviously provide some feedback. I'm going to get this installed on the boat. Um, I'm going to provide some feedback as to, to what I think. I think a case would be nice for this, um, because for me, I'm not going to be able to stack it. It's going to have to sit outside because I've got the Argon case with the SSD in it. So for me, it's going to be connected outside. Um, and I've made myself just a little um, board for it to sit on. So it's just going to sit on there like that. And then I can Velcro this in for test purposes. The way I'm going to connect it to my Raspberry Pi is using one of these cables. Um, and that will connect onto there. So we can connect that in and then as I say this will sit separately and then this will plug into the Raspberry Pi so it's going to kind of be like that. Um, so yeah, really interested, really interesting project, great to be on board, looking forward to seeing what it's going to do. So you can probably see here a lot of the electronics are all out of the, uh, the Pi box here where everything is normally stored. So this is my power supply and then normally here I've got um, a couple of little boards that I use to connect everything and like these sensors and things. But what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just testing this MacArthur hat. So we just show you what's connected. This is a little board that I made to go from I2C. So my I2C temperature sensor and humidity is here. Um, and then it's just got a little wire going through the back uh, and that's on there. So normally that would be plugged into the jumper that's on the top of the Raspberry Pi, which is here. Um, but this board has a little um, special connector, I think they're called QUIC, Q-W-I-I-C. So what I did was I made a little converter and put a little terminal block on there so that I could just wire that straight in and it just allows me to expand with these, so with more quick connectors, or I could put another terminal this side and connect more sensors that way if I wanted. This one here, this white one here, that one, that is one wire, so that is my outside temperature sensor just plugged into the board. Next to it, we've got CTORC, so this is the CTORC interface. And then on the end here, I've got NMEA 2000, so I'm just doing a little bit of testing with NMEA 2000. And you can see here, hopefully you can just see the lights flashing. So the NMEA 2000 bus is flashing, which will cover that up a little bit. So we've got in and out going on that, because I'm exporting some data out. This one, I think, um, is an error, because one of the pins is used on my board. Um, because of that case, so I think that's an error because I haven't actually got anything set up on that. And you can see the C talk light, hopefully, it's just glowing away there. So, as once that's connected up, and basically just literally just put your wires into that and plug in the terminals, obviously, everything works as it normally would. Um, and you can see here, just try and get the screen so it's a bit clearer. You can see we've got you know the wind information, the depth, all the usual good stuff. It's, it's working as it would do normally, there's no difference. But it just simply means that you can connect into this and you don't need to solder anything up. I'm not running the power module just at the moment, so I'm still powering the Pi separately and then the power's coming down this cable and onto the board. So I've not changed that over yet. Um, but just in terms of regular testing, it was just follow the guide, plug it in, and it just worked. So it, it, it's really good and as I say, it just makes it a lot easier for you rather than having to you know, start building your own electronics. I mean, if you just buy that board, stick it in there, shove in some cables and configure something and it works, that, that's really good. So what I'm doing now is here, I'm just doing a little bit of testing because as I say, I've plugged in NMEA 2000 um, and this one here is actually NMEA 2000 and all of the rest of this stuff you can see on the display is just CTORC, so that's working as it would do normally. 
So on this side, when it comes to configuring it, as I say, basically you just follow the guide. So let's bring up the CAM bus, because I've never done a CAM bus config before. So NME2000. You can see the data there, look, coming in. So it was just a case of adding the connection here. So add a device, as it says in the guide, follow the steps, plug in the um, various uh, ports and um, settings that it asks you to do, and then basically just add a connection and away it goes. And you can actually see the traffic coming in and out on this. And there it is. So that's basically what the hat is doing. It's, it's not doing anything different other than, like I say, it's got multiple interfaces on it. So you can use it to convert. So I could take this data in this way and take it out this way. So you could you could do that. And there are plugins to do that kind of thing. Um, or you can do what I'm doing at the moment and kind of like listen on both or output on one. Um, so there's loads of flexibility with it. It's really, it's really good. Okay, so I'll just show you how the power management board um, work. So this is the little plug-in that actually provides 5 volt to the Pi. So normally this USB cable here is plugged into this because this is what converts my power supply from 12 volts down to 5 that the Pi can use. So you have to disconnect the normal way of powering it, so the USB-C. And now the power is going into this board here, which is an extra module that you can purchase as part of the hat, going down this cable and into the Pi uh, GPIO pins. So what you need to do on this side, just ignore the wiring a little bit, but essentially we've got negative and then we've got two positives here. We've got a switched positive and a permanent positive. So when we apply power, everything starts up as normal. I don't know if you can hear, but the fans just started in here and we've got some lights and we've got a 12 volt light and a 5 volt light. If I come down to here, the Pi is powering up. Okay, so the Pi is now powered up going through its checks as per normal. So when you come to power it off, this is what happens. So you can see the lights in the corner. Let me just go right close to those lights. You can see the lights. So if I drop the power to it now, you can see it enters this power down mode. And the Pi is still running, but we've lost 12 volts and we're just providing five. And now it's going through its shutdown sequence. And in a second or two, it'll power off. There you go. And it's powered off. I've left this little bit to the end as this is the board that I made because it doesn't actually come with a MacArthur hat. So this is just a small breakout board and it uses the quick connector cable as you can see here. That plugs into the MacArthur hat and then I've added a small terminal block to the bottom of the little hub. It's got several connectors on it and two places where you can add a terminal block. This just makes it really easy to connect wires straight into the side. Well, I hope that was interesting. It certainly is a really good product and I look forward to testing it further.